Hello, my name is Brian Nelson. I'm a student at Minneapolis Community and Technical College in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm enrolled in the Associate Degree Program specializing in education. This video has been created for the Education 1500 and English 1110 courses as a reflective analysis on the topic of white privilege. White privilege can be explained in a few different ways, and those differences are typically dictated by which race is explaining them. For someone that is not white, a general description typically would be a person who is white or the overall population of white people who believe, whether knowingly or not, that they have an unearned privilege over people of color in our society and that they can benefit or have advantages without putting forth any effort at all. The existence of white privilege has been around for years, but has only been popularized and labeled as white privilege in recent years. The existence and practice of it dates back to the 1700s. Whites have been granted specific civil, political, and economic rights that people of color have not had. When the term white privilege was brought up in our class for discussion, I thought, come on, really? Are we really talking about whites still having privilege in our society over those of color? I thought the Civil Rights Movement took care of that years ago. By that thought alone, I was participating in white privilege, and my denial and ignorance of white privilege just perpetuated it even more. As a white male in our society, I do possess a sense of privilege that I clearly was not even aware of, or again, was in denial of. One of the leading uh, accredited authorities and researchers in white privilege is Peggy McIntosh. Her work clearly defines white privilege as it plays out today in our society and what white people can do to eliminate it from our society. Her article, White Privilege, Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack, had a very big impact uh, on my lack of knowledge or existence of white privilege. Uh, McIntosh details her own lack of recognizing white privilege, but then goes on to explain it in detail. She makes references like describing white privilege uh, makes one newly accountable. And having described it, what will I do to lessen it or then end it? Um, and the biggest thought I took from her to change my own thinking was when she talked about she began to understand way, why we are justly seen as oppressive even when we don't see ourselves that way. I was in the dark regard, in regards to white privilege and now my eyes are open to it and I can see what my part is in it to diminish it. Um, so now through conversations I've had with people of color and also people that are white, uh, I believe that unfortunately there is still a bias favoring uh, white Americans today. One of the most significant interactions or conversations that helped me change my thinking was with a classmate, David Johnson, who is black. Uh, his experiences uh, and perspectives on white privilege were the totally opposite of mine. He confirmed the existence of white privilege today and also what it looked like and how it has occurred in his life and more importantly how it has impact, impacted his life negatively. This exchange was powerful for me yet at the same time I felt embarrassed for what my thoughts or lack of thoughts on white privilege were. Again, that was just me participating in white privilege and promoting the denial uh, and the non-existence of it. Now I'm quite aware of the existence of white privilege. Uh, my thoughts and choices on how I will react uh, to and choose to participate in white privilege are ever changed. That's not to say that it isn't a daily conscious effort to be mindful of white privilege uh, and to not engage in feeling its existence. It is. Some of my opinions of the right white race have changed also. Changed uh, to because the fact that I'm white gives me no uh, leg up on, a, on anyone of another race. Uh, I need to see myself as equal to others. I need to listen to others um, and their thoughts and beliefs before engaging and pursuing my own agenda as it may be racially driven. This can be specifically applied to how I interact with other classmates um, of non-white races. I need to hear them, respect them, and generally honor uh, their, their race and cultural differences. If I do this, uh, I can diminish my participation in white privilege um, and in turn prepare me for the practices 
practices I will need to exercise when placed in a classroom with varying non-white races, and in dealing with families of different races and cultures. So that's my perspective on white privilege and how that perspective has changed and um, what my part is to do to stop it. Thank you.